Hi folks, my name is Mitch. Just wanted to do another video on a game that I'm currently playing called Guardian Tales. Please keep in mind that anything mentioned here is my own personal opinion, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. Today I'm going to be talking about a new unit. His name is Elif. He recently dropped and whether or not you should pull him. Uh, I believe definitely pull him if he fits your melee team. He has a really unique skill. His party buff is a range defense and at 4 stars he's at 48%. At 5 stars, he's sitting at 70%. Now also keep in mind that next um, unit that will be released is going to be a 3 star fire healer. And on that same banner is going to be Bari. So Bari and the 3 star healer is going to be coming to global soon enough. So if you're looking for, um, if you don't have Bari already, or if you're looking for a, a three-star based healer, that's the first one that we're going to be getting. Um, you might want to keep your gems and skip out on Elif for now. So the interesting thing about Elif is that he is a well-rounded unit. It's going to be going over some of the accessories that you should maybe focus on. These are free to play accessories. And the reason why I say it's free to play is because these are three star bases. So it's really easy to get these to level 71 to max them and break them. Um, the best accessory, of course, is going to be the um, mirror accessory. That's the mirror necklace because it'll give him a lot of defense, a lot of attack. And the random abilities that he can also get from that is very beneficial. Skill damage, weapon regen, speed, HP, and defense would probably be the best overall outcome. And looking at the free to play accessories, one of the best ones is definitely the sharpshooter. Gives them the most attack, gives them some crit chance. He has zero crit chance to begin with, but that's okay. Um, has HP and skill damage. The other accessory to look into is the Greed Earring. And the e Greed Earring is similar to the Sharpshooter. It has more HP. It has more skill attack. It has a lower base attack percentage. This one does have defense on it. And it has lower crit. And then the other accessory to look at is actually the Golden Pocket Watch, or the Gold Pocket Watch rather. So the Gold Pocket Watch has the same HP as the Greed Earring. It has lower skill attack than the Greed Earring. It's the same as the Sharpshooter. The attack is the same as the Greed Earring. And this one has weapon skill regen. So again, um, also keep in mind this one up has... Um, if you have this one really built up, then this is probably one of the better overall um, options for... Elif. Okay, so we are going to now look at some of the parties that he works well with. In a perfect setup, if you have nothing but three star units, his ideal team would be himself, Lupina, Eugene, and a tank. The tank role can be filled by either Marina or or Ogma. And with Aleph's or with Aleph's skill, it's airborne to down. Lupina is injured to airborne. Eugene is airborne to injured. And then Ogma or Marina will be down to injured or all to injured. So you go with Aleph, then Ogma or Marina, then Lupina, and then Eugene. And then you'll have a full perfect skill chain. And the great thing about that is that you have a team combination skill if you have all of them at five stars, which will allow you to capitalize on doing extra damage. So that's, that's that. The great thing about their buffs is that Ogma will give you 45 defense. Marina will give you 40 HP. Uh, Lupina will give you the 27% crit. So give uh, Aleph a chance to crit more often. And Eugene will give a melee attack of 50. Uh, Vish can definitely be involved in this party setup as well. Because his skill is all to injure. And he gives a HP of 40% as well. 
If you're looking for a more free to play option, if you don't have three star base units, the other team that you can build is Aleph, Craig, Shapira, and Amy. And with them, it's basically gives you a lot of melee attack. It gives you defense. It gives you crit. So that's another one to look into. Another one is Craig, Amy, and um, Akayuki. So everyone will chain perfectly there. And then the last group would probably be... I believe I don't have it set up. Yeah, the other one would be... Maybe Ranpang would be involved in that. But I think Craig would be the overall best option as a tank. Okay. So I want to kind of show off um, his abilities a little bit. His normal attack is a small AoE. It has a... It's a small range, but it's... He, please keep in mind that he is a melee unit. So he's a melee range. So his, again, regular attack does have a small AoE. His skills has a wider range of AoE. Also not that big of a distance that he'll cover. But it is um, a pretty wide AoE. His regular attacks will go through walls. As well as his chain skill or his weapon skill. All right. So the thing that I want to showcase off was if he has the ability to solo or actually um, complete his level 60 rift. That's one of the biggest challenges that I've experienced when I did the Bianca video. Um, he is pretty much built out the same way as Bianca. His awakenings, the only thing that are awakened right now are his main notes with his skills. And that's the same as Bianca. So let's look at her real quick. Actually, Bianca looks like she might have a little bit more nodes here and there. So going back to the event rift, we're gonna go to the level 60 and stick him with the same setup. We have Idol Eva, no weapon, level one. Shapira, she has her own weapon. She's level one. She's going to die. Um, and then Aleph in the front with the knight in the back end. He has his own weapon. He's fully awakened. And this is pretty much the same setup as I had going with Bianca. And we are going to enter and let's see how he does. So... Personally, I like him a little bit more just because he doesn't take time to charge. So he doesn't need to charge up before he attacks. He does need to run up to the mob in order to attack because of his distance. But that's pretty much the same thing with the knight as well. So already he's handling it a lot better than Bianca in the video that I did. The main thing, of course, is can he survive? And if he gets pinned down, no. That is also a bad thing about Aleph, is that he can get interrupted really easily. If he's trying to do his chain skill, or his weapon skill rather, if he gets attacked, then it gets canceled out. His attacks itself is not the fastest, and he has to stay in one spot in order to attack. So it kind of leaves them open. It's pretty easy to counter him if you happen to bump into him in arena. You just pretty much flood him. So as you see these golems here, or these whatever mobs, they got him cornered. As long as he doesn't stay in the corner, then he should be fine. And that should be okay. So that's that right there. 
So he does need help in order to complete his event rift. All right, so I'm gonna stop there. Now, whether or not he's there to change the meta in the arena or Coliseum is anybody's guess. We're gonna have to wait for a few weeks before everybody else can really get um, him leveled up, get him awakened, max limit break, and so on and so forth. If you look at it now, you won't see him at all in the Coliseum in the top 100. You won't really see him at all in the arena as well. But that's because he just dropped the other day. So I'm not expecting anybody to have him appear yet until the next probably few weeks if they even have resources still. So that's all I have to say with Elif again. Pull for him if he really fits your melee team. Um, I did and I got his uh, X weapon. Um, he's, he's a decent unit. He's worth some investment. Uh, but again, it's, it's really up to you because the next banner that's going to be dropping is a brand new healer unit along with Bari. So that's going to be happening. Thanks again for watching and take care.